Bye. All right. Uh, today's date is May 3rd, 2012. The time is approximately 3.34 p.m. This will be an interview conducted at the EVAC headquarters located at 135 Carswell Avenue in Daytona Beach, Florida. The person conducting the interview is Special Agent Tim Kraft with Florida Department of Law Enforcement. The person being interviewed is EMT James Lewin of the EVAC here in Daytona Beach, Volusia County. It's in reference to a Daytona Beach Police Department officer-involved shooting that occurred on April 28th uh, on the campus of Amber riddle Aeronautical University. Can you raise your right hand for me, Mr. Lewin? You solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, so I'd help you God. I do. Okay. On that particular date, you happen to be working for EVAC uh, as an EMT in your capacity of your job. Can you just des describe to me in your own words what your actions and observations were that night? Um, I was sitting across the street, um, and then the call came out from dispatch. Where, where were you sitting across the street? Um, at the Volusia Mall. Okay. Um, and the call came out, and we started heading towards it. Um, and who first. was with you? I'm sorry to keep interrupting you. Um, you were on a three-person unit? Yes, Ryan and John Gorman. Gorman and what's uh, Ryan? Marshall. Marshall. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. And um, responding emergency on the way, the scene wasn't secure, so we... Uh, uh, pull up onto Marriott's um, back parking lot, so we kind of rolled through there. As we rolled through there, uh, came up that the scene was secured, so put the lights and signs back on and made the right turn onto Richard Patty, and that's where we pretty much, it's right there, the scene was okay. less than a block away. Um, then pull up on the scene, um, we found the first patient, which was laying on so-called Flight Line Road, uh, that ever the Illinois University's campus. Is that the female or the the female? Okay. And what do you see? Um, I saw the Lincoln, the uh, involved vehicle, and I saw the passenger's door open, and there was a police officer. I don't know what agency that was with the patient, and um, the, the patient was laying supine, so facing up. Okay. And someone was controlling the bleeding. I think that was a police officer. Okay. And that was your sole, your sole focus and responsibility was on the female patient then? Yes. Um, the other patient um, was actually found inside the parking lot, so we had to make a further right turn into that parking lot. So I then, we, as soon as we found the first one, we just kind of stopped there because we have a second unit. Okay. And what was your, were you the driver, passenger? I was the driver of the vehicle. Okay. And uh, Marshall was the uh, pet on the passenger seat. He got out first. Let me back you up just a little bit. What's that? Um, when you first get the call, it goes out as, what type of call was it? I believe it was gunshot or a shooting. Okay. Um, and I right, didn't right, really, right. it wasn't really my responsibility to uh, answer the call. Right. I just know it was. Okay. So you're at the Volusia Mall. You mentioned as you come across, you, you stage in, in the area of the Marriott because the scene's not secure yet. Yes. While you're staging, do you see any activity, police activity that you recall? Um, not really. I always saw those lights. I didn't even hear the gunshots. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you see the lights in the cars, um, describe that to me. Were they moving or were they already on the scene? Or? Um... I would say some of the lights were um, stationary, so they're on scene. Um, I guess there were a little more lights that are moving towards the scene, and that's about it. Which which direction do you remember? Um, I would say some were coming from the intersection of Clyde and Richard Petty, so it's coming towards me, and then made the left turn onto Flight Line Road. Okay. So that's really. You didn't it. hear any shots or anything. No. Um, as you arrive on scene, what do you, what do you see when you get out of the truck? What do you see? What's your observations? Um, like I said, there was the female patient laying on the ground and the police officer with the patient. Uh, then I proceeded to uh, get the stretcher out, so I had to turn less because I was parking facing the patient. So I had to get out and then walk towards the back. So at that time, I don't really see anything. Um, and then as soon as I got the stretcher out, uh, I can see the patient again, so I walked towards her, and at that point it was all medical attention mm -hmm. that I gave. Uh, so as you approached the car, uh, how was she positioned? You said she was supine. Was she inside or outside the car? Outside. Outside the car, and I saw the passenger door uh, 
the glass, the window is broken, I guess. On which side? Passenger side. Front, front or rear? Do you recall? Front. Front. Okay. Front. Does she make any, you have any conversation with her? Does she make any statements or anything that you recall? Um, no, as far as I can recall, um, she keeps answering the medical questions we had um, concerning her uh, condition at that point. So, and she said she was coming from Boston, but it's kind of common knowledge right now. So, All right. Yeah. But she said that on the scene mm -hmm. that night. Yes. Okay. I can't that Does. How long do you think you might have been on the scene? Um, the scene? According to the call notes, I was on scene for seven minutes. Okay. Um, I would say it was a little longer of that because um, the, the way we do our call times or when I put in the computer beginning transport, that's um, the cutoff for on scene. So I would say a little longer than that, but um, because the paramedics were at the back uh, attending the patient and can't leave this fire and we to do some more stuff with fire mm -hmm. before it leave, but I didn't really see anything at that point. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, the time is now approximately 3.40 p.m. 